<laughs> hey guys and welcome back to Ghost of Webway. So I'm going to go over more of the leaks that we've been seeing that have been uh, it's the, the floodgates are open now. I mean, obviously loads for craft worlds, but I will be focusing more on the Harlequins leaks. Um, and there have been quite a few new ones that have come out, which is why I thought I'd wait a little bit to make the second video going over all of those. Um, so let's go through a few of the things that we've seen so far. The first thing that we're going to go over are the masks or now sadets um, that we can take and what has been revealed about them. So there are three Sadas, as we've already sort of looked at in some of the previous leaks, Light, Dark and Twilight. It doesn't say which one is which, but we can make some educated guesses. Um, one of them gives you plus one attack and plus two inches of consolidation. It's not bad. It's kind of a mixture of like Midnight Sorrow and Frozen Stars, which is very nice because it gives you the extra movement and it gives you the extra attack. So it's quite an aggressive um, stance, but also can be used to make lots of those little movement shenanigans and tricks that we like from Midnight Sorrow. So it's kind of, it's a, it's a mix of the two things, but I think it's actually quite a nice, nice one there. Um, another one is Fight on Death. So we looked at this last time, the, you know, the, the leaks were saying that all Harlequins can do this. No, it's a specific mask and you take it. It is still very potent for the same reasons as I said last time of the damage output being quite phenomenal um, for that. So you send in a big unit of 10. Um, if you don't quite manage to chew through something, you probably will by the end of it. Um, particularly with contesting objectives, I think that can be a very, very strong contender. And then the last one is quite tasty. I think this might be a very, very viable competitive option, which is that you can only be hit on a four, five, or six if you are more than 12 inches away. And in addition, you can advance and shoot. So this is like, you know, um, Soaring Spide, but with added damage mitigation. That's really strong, very, very strong. I can see that be being the new competitive choice, depending on how loadouts work with our pistols and our, our, our shooting options. But if that it does apply to everything, then essentially all of you Sauron Spike fans are pretty safe um, in still being able to do these kind of things. But you get the additional buff of if you're outside of that threat range that you want to be in anyway, you're also going to have damage mitigation. It's really good. The Troop Master data sheet was also leaked. Um, so he's gone up to six attacks. So one extra attack, it's not bad. But his Choreographer of War um, is now only reroll ones to wound and it only affects core. You don't know what core is going to be. Troops, presumably, um, bikes, I don't know. Um, if we only get one core unit, that's not great, but we'll see. It is quite a nerf um, and it does hurt us a little bit in terms of our, our ability to put out damage. But going through the weapons options, it might also be to mitigate too much damage output. So on his profile as well, we can see that all of our upgrades, um, so our kisses, caresses, and our embraces all have the same profile, which I think is a bit weird. Um, but they're all strength four, minus two, damage two. So it's good to get the extra damage. It's kind of a middle ground between all of the different options you had before, and they gain a keyword for each of those weapons. So there will be an associated stratagem that will allow you to do certain things. The leaks are pointing to potentially sixes to wound with kisses, and for one of the others to ignore invulnerable saves, I imagine given the law that would be the caress, um, both of which are very strong. Again, I'm not sure how I feel about this one because it's a bit strange um, to make a keyword and a stratagem activate the weapon choice in itself. But, I mean, the, the profile in itself I think is quite strong. Um, our Harlequin's blades as well have been buffed, so now we get minus one AP and we get an additional attack. So, if you take the mask with the extra attack and then you also take blades, then you're talking about a massive amounts of attacks basically per harlequin which is um you know if they stay the same then that's six attacks per harlequin um was the same as the two troop master so um, quite a lot they are only strength three still um so obviously you're mostly wounding on fives sometimes sixes 
But, you know, it's a nice little buff to have, so it's not bad. And then he can still take a, a power sword, the, the troop master himself. So interesting, but not as interesting as the rest of them, because what we seem to have gotten as well is almost every single ranged weapon that we possess as well. So we did talk about the Shuriken Cannon last time, that was kind of expected. There are some more interesting ones now, though, too. The Neuro Disruptor has been given quite a buff, um, and uh, the profile itself is it's stronger, but the main thing that I'd be looking at, and the most interesting thing I think about this, is that it now causes mortal wounds on a hit to everything that isn't a vehicle. That means to monsters, to bikers, anything that isn't a vehicle, it causes a mortal wound on a hit. That's like if you have, you know, a unit of two that's you know, hitting on threes, or, uh, like a unit with two even, sorry, that's hitting on threes that's like almost a smite, you know. And if you start spamming those around multiple units, then you're actually looking at quite a lot of mortal wound output. So I think that's really good. Um, might also balance out the kind of the, the less effective, let's say, or less strong uh, melee weapons that we might have. Um, looking at the next one, we've got the Prismatic Cannon for the Void Weaver. I think the Void Weaver might finally be worth taking. Um, not only does it have the two Shuriken Cannons as well for, you know, the six shots, that's rank six, um, potentially minus three, although mostly minus one and two damage, but we're also looking at a massive buff to the main cannon. So the Prismatic Cannon is now 36 inches which is fantastic to see because we didn't have any range on anything before. Um, two profiles instead of three. So heavy two, strength 12, minus four AP, two D3 damage. So that's not bad, not bad at all. Um, and then the other more dispersed beam is heavy three D3, <laughs> strength five, minus three, one damage. So horde clearance, you know, potentially nine shots is nice. And having the versatility between the two and that extra range, I think could make the Void Weaver a real contender. I'm really considering taking it, but like the two that I have at the moment now. Um, the other option that we can have is the Void Weaver Haywire Cannon, which now has a different profile to the Sky Weaver one. Um, the Void Weaver one is heavy 2d3. Again, like takes out some of the randomness, which isn't bad. Minus three and um, three damage, and then it causes auto wounds on a four plus, and it um, gives additional D3 mortal wounds on rolls of a six. Doesn't give the one mortal wound on the four anymore, which is a nerf in some ways, but the damage on the cannon itself is higher. So, yeah, I don't know. Someone do the maths on this one. I'm not very good at maths. Um, with Skyweaver ones, however, they are different. They're very different. They're now, um, what is it? The heavy one plus D3, so a potential of four shots rather than six, but a minimum of two, so yeah. They are only strength three, um, however, so not as strong anymore. The, the Void Weaver one is strength four, but they are still minus three and they are damage D3, so they have a little bit more versatility against, let's say, like more marine style infantry. Um, which is interesting. And then they have the same rule of you know, D3 uh, mortal wounds on sixes and auto wound on fours. I still think they're worth taking. So I don't think you have to start rushing around and you know swapping out all your shuriken cans for haywire cans. I'm thinking actually a unit of each. So two big units of sky weavers, uh, one unit with shuriken cannons, one unit with haywire cannons should actually give you quite a nice like, variety and should actually be able to deal with a lot of different threat threats. So I'm, I'm actually quite happy with that. Speaking of me being happy, um, some of you know that my favorite unit pretty much in the whole of 40k is the Death Chester and the Shrieker Cannon has also received a buff. So it's now 30 inches, which is good to have the extra range. It's uh, Assault 3, so you're still running around as a Death Chester doing lots of damage. Or, some damage depending on how you run yours. Um, strength six, minus two, two damage. Very nice, I like it. And that's without seeing any of the rolls or anything else or relics or things that we could take on that Death Chester. So I think as a base profile, this is pretty good. He also, the weapon itself ignores Lookout Sir. So not bad. Um, interestingly, 
another weapon that has been buffed, and in a very strange way, oh, yes. is the Star Bonus. It's now an assault weapon, so you can take multiple. Um, it's 12 inches, strength 7, minus 3, and damage 2. So we might be seeing a few more of those. We haven't seen what the glaives look like by comparison, but if you want to keep your bike shooty rather than a variety of both, then that might be actually a really strong option. So pluses, minuses, buffs, nerfs, it's again looking like a, a, in some ways a total rework of how the faction works, but personally I'm really looking forward to playing this. Let me know your thoughts below and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.